Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we'll show you how to how to remove and replace valve cover gasket on a Dodge Magnum Charger or Chrysler 300 with a 3.5 engine. Uh, that's the valve cover gasket right here, one here, one on this side. We have a replacement engine from a charger that we just took out yesterday. And uh, once we remove all the air, man uh, like the intake manifolds and all that stuff so we can reach to the valve cover guys, we'll show you how to do it now. Stay with us, let's go ahead and start on removing the intake, that's, that's really a big job for this model. For some reason it's a little bit more complicated than it should be, so stay with us. We need to remove the intake and all that stuff, not very easy procedure, but we'll show you how to do it. Thank you for watching guys. So with a 15mm socket we're going to remove the nut. Okay, like that. We have one nut here now on the passenger side, windshield wiper arm. Make sure you don't lose those. And once you remove them, okay, you can go ahead, grab it and you need to wiggle it a little bit and it will come out of there, as you can see, just like that. Okay, we have one more here. And this one, it's a little bit more limited room. And it's stuck pretty good. Okay, you can see it came out. So you need to just fold it and lift on this side now. Okay, and it comes up like that. And those are... So next we need to get a prying tool. You can do that with a screwdriver, but you can damage them. We need to remove a couple of plastic clips here. Uh, that hold that plastic piece there. And we'll, we'll have, I think, a couple of screws as well. Stay with us, we're gonna figure it out in a second. Okay, one there now. Check out the channel guys, we have many videos about that model, Dodge Charger, Dodge Magnum. Uh, all of them use the same platform, so it will be the same engine, the 3.5. Uh, almost everything will be the same on those. And those could be stuck pretty bad sometimes. If you break one, you can get a replacement one at a parts store. This one broke as you can see because sometimes they get stuck really bad and uh, there is a hidden one right here so you need to make sure you get this one underneath the tin some of them will come easy okay this one broke too I just the one time deal most of them unfortunately you can save a couple For some reason the ones on this side are stuck pretty bad compared to the other one, I don't know why. Then they have been removed and it's a 2007 model car. Okay, this one came out, so that's good, we saved three of them. And uh, next, we have a couple of screws. But before that we have, uh, we have one more clip right there. Okay, we removed it. So that piece is out of here now. Okay, let's check the other side. I don't think we have anything there. It, it looks all good there, so we clear. And next, uh, we need to use a few screwdriver. And those screws right there, you need to turn them only, only about, uh, I think about 90 degrees to the left. They come and it unlocks it. Okay, there is a couple of clips there holding. Once we remove it, we'll show you guys what it is. Okay, there is another one right here. Okay, this one is ready to go as well now. You need to grab it. And if I don't fall on all the tools. Okay, we need to pick it up. And again, there is clips here. Huh? 
and get in we have the video guys so we don't screw up like we did we forgot to remove there is a couple small clips one on this side one on the other side as well so we need to go ahead and remove that one okay it came out like that and now we can remove that plastic piece should be the whole thing we still have the one on the other side that we need to get okay just like that and oh we still have one more here one big clip holding Okay, it's hard to see. You can see how dirty it is there, so it's hard to even recognize that there is a clip. Okay, almost all of there. And this one will probably break the way it looks. We actually use the pliers on this one. It's stuck really bad. Okay, came out. So now we can... Uh, Hopefully go ahead and remove it finally. Okay, right there. So now we need to uh, remove just, I think we have only two bolts. We'll check in a second with a 10 millimeter socket. Okay, one there. And we have one more right here. So we need to go ahead and take care of that one. We'll need to disconnect the wires as well for them. For them. Okay, this one came out. Now the wires you need to uh, press in there and pull it out. Okay, like that. And now you can just pick it up. Okay, and it needs to come out of the mount there, you can see it like that, and we have the whole system out of here, you can see how, how easy that thing was. Next we still have one more clip to remove there, so we can reach the two bolts and we'll need to remove that bar. If you don't remove it, it will be really complicated, really tight fit, and you you most likely will damage something. I mean, we've seen so many in the past that we've worked on people trying to do it, just uh, saving themselves like 20 minutes work to remove, uh, to remove that support here. That way the intake will come straight up and you won't be bending anything, we won't be damaging it. Cause that thing is 400 bucks. You can check it yourself, used one is 350 to 400 plus shipping. So uh, don't, don't just uh, screw yourself spend extra 20 minutes which will actually end up being uh, still faster because you'll be able to just pick that thing up and it will be really easy next we need to remove the bolts with a 13 millimeter socket okay like that and we have uh, on this side as well and we have the mount for the computer here too okay just like that now we need to remove that clip there for the cables you can see underneath it so we can we, we can pull it out there is one more on this side as well that's the one for the windshield wiper molar Okay, right there. And this is it guys, it came out of there. 
So we got that. Uh, now in order to remove the intake, guys, we need to remove the boot here. We need to disconnect the wire. Uh, we got the, you can see that one loose already, the clamp just with a screwdriver. And in order to remove the wires, you push that thing up, press down and pull. Okay, we got this one loose as well. So uh, we'll just go ahead and pull, pull the holes out. So it's not in the way. I mean, you don't have to, but uh, we, we prefer it that way. Now we need to disconnect the wire for the throttle body here. Press that thing back, push down, okay, and pull. Okay, like that. Now you don't have to remove the throttle body for that procedure. We need to remove these two nuts here with a 10 millimeter socket. And then uh, on the bottom, okay, right here, there is two bolts with a 15 millimeter one here and one down there that we already got loose uh, uh, so we can we can save you guys time you see what they look like in a second okay one of the bolts and now the second one there and we need to go ahead and remove the nuts after that the 10 millimeter nuts that hold the intake with the total body to the cylinder head that way and uh, we're accomplishing quite a bit so far. Okay, one is out. Now one more. Okay, and you can see uh, the, the bracket should come out of there now. Okay, like that. Now we need to disconnect all the wires that we can right now. So we just press to the back, push down and pull. Some of them will be probably stuck because they haven't been removed for a long time okay like this one here so yep this one came out then we need to remove the hoses you need to remember how they were and be careful not to break the throttle body okay this one came loose And it's pretty tight, it's really cold too. Right now that's why the rubber is not flexible at all. So we have another hose there that we need to remove. Okay, just like that. We have the one on the back. Okay, we got this one out now. That's the EGR tube there. So this one will just slide out. We won't need to remove it. Then we have two more on the front. Some models have only one, depending on the emission standards that it covers and things like that. Ours has two here. Okay, like that. And now we need to use the 10 millimeter, guys, and we need to remove quite a few bolts now. Let's. Next we need to remove the tube for the transmission that goes right there and let okay well we almost forgot two bolts right here guys two brackets and those are with a uh, with a 10 millimeter wrench will be the easiest way to get to those okay you can see we need to take the nut off all the way that supports the intake so it doesn't crack, vibrate and potentially cause it to crack. And be careful how you do that stuff because that, the, that intake is pretty expensive. So, okay, one nut is out, then another one. Okay, we got it out and uh, if those don't move, you can get them loose with a 15 millimeter on the bottom and uh, they'll come out easier that way. Okay, we'll see. We'll probably have to do it too. We'll have to get those loose with the 15 millimeter. Now,
and once you get it loose just a little bit probably even half revolution or one revolution you'll be enough room for this one to start wiggling and moving so you, you won't have to remove it all the way it's really hard to get but a wrench will be probably okay like that this this should be enough you can see it clears it to the side and now we have one more there and this one is not easy to reach as well it's easier to replace an engine on that thing than to <laughs> mess with some little things we have a replacement engine right there for another dot charger Okay, we almost got it now. Once you get them loose, they usually go by hand. Okay, like that. Now we should be ready to pull the intake, guys. We need to have a, something ready to cover the intake holes. We're going to install the 10 millimeter nuts there so we don't forget where they come from. And see what else we forget maybe now. Uh, we need to get the EGR tube on the back out, okay, like that, it comes out, and that's the intake coming out, okay, you can see like that, now it's important to cover those holes so you don't drop anything inside, because that could be catastrophic then, okay, like that. Alright guys, so now we can go ahead and proceed to, uh, with removing the valve cover, we will demonstrate on this side. The other one will be identical. So uh, what we'll need to do, we need to disconnect all the ignition coils now. And uh, once we do that, uh, we'll need to remove the ignition coils. Leave the spark plugs in, in case you drop something, so it doesn't go in the cylinder. So with the 10 millimeter socket, we're going to uh, go ahead and remove those. Okay, just like that, pull them out. It doesn't matter which one is where, so uh, even if you switch them later, it's it's not a big deal, as long as the cables are in order. Now with the 8mm socket, we're going to remove all the bolts that hold the uh, valve cover to the cylinder head. So all together we should have 8 bolts and they'll stay in, don't pull them out, ok like that, you need to make sure that the cables are not attached to the valve cover, uh, everything's loose there, ok and it got loose now, all we have to do is pull it out guys, ok you can see that's the one right here, engine looks amazing for about uh, well about 100,000 miles on this one looks pretty clean we just noticed some white here so that might be a sign of a head gasket coming soon okay so you just pull out the valve cover gasket you can see just like that that's what it is Okay, when you get a new one guys, make sure that you get the one with the rings here. You can replace those as well around the spark plug so you don't leak any oil there as well. So when you are ready to install the new one guys, you just push it in the groove. Uh, you can see, it. just make sure that it goes where it's supposed to go. Get a good quality gasket because otherwise it's not, they're gon not gonna last very long and start leaking again. It's pretty simple uh, once you remove the intake. and. You don't have to remove windshield wipers and stuff, but if you damage your intake, it's almost 400 bucks, guys. So don't risk it. Probably about 30 minutes extra work, save you 400 bucks and a lot of travel. Okay, and you just go ahead and install it, make sure that cable or anything like that doesn't go underneath it. You need to make sure that it goes in the spark plug holes there.
Okay, it's sealed good. And all we have to do now, uh, go in a cross pattern. Okay, one here, then one down there. To make sure you get it right. Never go in sequence. And now you need to go ahead, install the ignition coils, put everything back together in reverse order we took it apart guys. I know it's complicated but uh, just whatever we did in reverse order. Thank you guys for watching, please subscribe, help us grow that channel together and thank you for your support.